I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. The Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like? No, I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. Today is Good Friday, which if Donald Trump had ever read or even briefly scanned the Bible, he might know. But if you are a Christian believer, you know that it marks the day Jesus of Nazareth, a Palestinian Jewish carpenter born in poverty as a displaced refugee in his own land, a land conquered by the Roman Empire, was crucified for the crime of defying the Roman emperor by worshiping the God of Israel rather than the emperor himself. An invented crime for which he was nailed to a cross and mocked by Roman soldiers who affixed to his head a crown of thorns and labeled him king of the Jews, a man who performed miracles for the poor, the sick, and the hated, and who, despite being the son of the divine, died for the sins of the masses, a man whose entire ministry was about serving the poor, the immigrant, and embracing the rejected. Good Friday is when Christians commemorate his sacrifice for all mankind. And then there's Donald Trump, a man born with a silver spoon in his mouth, who has only ever served himself, and who is running for president again to keep himself out of prison. And yet, he has also cast himself as a modern-day Jesus during this most sacred week in the Christian calendar. He posted this message from a follower. It's ironic that Christ walked through his greatest persecution the very week they are trying to steal your property from you. The term Christ, by the way, is not Jesus' last name. It's an Anglicization of the Greek translation of the word Messiah, the king and savior of the world. Well, to my knowledge, Jesus, the Messiah, never paid off a porn star to cover up committing adultery while his third wife was pregnant with his fifth child. Nor do I recall Jesus selling a golden calf or golden sneakers that his followers could worship as an icon to him. Jesus certainly wasn't hawking Bibles as part of a never-ending grift. But for the low, low price of $59.99, you can buy the God Bless the USA Bible, the only Bible endorsed by Trump. Because to Donald Trump, a Bible is no more sacred than a Trump board game or Trump water. It's just another cheap tchotchke to sell to his followers, as is faith. It's just another thing to sell to frightened white evangelical Christians to get them to set aside what they know about their faith and vote for Trump anyway, to keep him out of jail. Trump has turned them into cult members, shared his persecution complex with them to get them to believe he's fighting a holy war for them. But because he doesn't know anything about the actual Jesus, Donald Trump doesn't understand that a real Messiah would never say migrants are poisoning the blood of our country. What Jesus actually said was, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. And before he died, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Joining me now is the Reverend Al Sharpton, president of the National Action Network and host of Politics Nation on MSNBC. And Robert P. Jones, president and founder of the Public Religion Research Institute and author of The Hidden Roots of White Supremacy and the Path to a Shared American Future. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. I have to turn to my my, my play pastor, my part-time pastor, Reverend Al Sharpton. Did my theology. Did I get my theology right? You were right on. No 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 problem at all. Okay, good. Because I listen. I listen to the pastors, including yourself, my my big brother. Talk to me about Trump, because Trump is not not a Christian. I mean, he's not a, a religious man at all. He's never... Do you know him? He's not religious. No, I've never heard him even discuss religion, less known, be accused of, at- of attending religious gatherings, which is why it is so insulting to me as one who grew up in the church and have been a preacher since I was a boy, for him to not only come with selling Bibles during Holy Week. I mean, this is the week that we, that believe in Christ, the real Christ, uh, deal with the crucifixion today of Jesus, Good Friday, and Sunday, the resurrection. And for him to use that as a marketing tool where the money goes to Donald Trump, right. not to a cause, not nope. to help the poor, nope. not even to his campaign, to him, which means he's really doing this to pay off lawyers to get out of the porn star situation, defraud and bank situation. And to, and to do this shows somebody that is not only not religious, but is totally insensitive to those that are. Yeah. To take the Bible and say that this is the only Bible endorsed by Donald Trump. If you believed it was the sacred word of God, 
who are you or I to endorse the word of God? And add to it. And add to I mean, it. There was no Council of Nicaea that added to the Bible. Donald Trump did it. He thinks he has the right to do it. Then I need to know, Robert Jones, because you've got the data, why do so many white evangelical Christians, why are they down with this? This is what you might, might call apostasy, idolatry. This is sin. And yet they are saying we are for it. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'll dust off my own Master of Divinity degree here and say there's one other word that's been rolling around in my head this week, and that's blasphemy. Yes. Uh, right? I mean, anytime, uh, you know, someone attributes the the attributes of the deity to themselves and defiles things that are sacred, I mean, that's straight up blasphemy. Um, and, and it's deeply, deeply troubling. The other, and the other thing, too, is, uh, you know, the, uh, the most fundamental, uh, you know, piece uh, in sort of Christianity is a willingness to repent of one's sins. Mm. And Trump has openly said he has never felt the need uh, to repent of his sin, right? I think this kind of fundamental uh, tenet of, of uh, becoming Christian. Uh, but, you know, here's the thing. I think the, the only reason why we, I think, are scratching our heads or seem confused about uh, white evangelical support for Trump is because we've accepted some mythology uh, that they have handed us, and that is that it's been all about abortion and that white evangelicals have held their nose and voted for Trump. But the data simply does not back that up. Here's the truth. Uh, it has not just been about abortion. When Trump uh, denigrates immigrants, calls them rapists and criminals, uh, white evangelicals are with him uh, in that sentiment about Im a fearful sentiment about immigrants. When Trump has uh, uh, denigrated the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, really uh, supported Confederate monuments, uh, white evangelicals are with him. Uh, on those sentiments. So it is this broader worldview that is really the reinstitution of a 1950s white Christian America. It is white Christian nationalism. That Bible is, if we ever had any doubts about Trump's white Christian nationalist agenda, this Bible, and I hesitate to even call it that, this book, right, that he's bound these things up, uh, these unholy things together, um, is an indication that this is exactly what he is going to institute uh, if he is returned to power. It, it is. I mean, we've seen Vladimir Putin do this, uh, Rev, you know, in Russia, where he is an, an, a not a religious man, but has sort of cultivated the church in, in, in Russia to do what he needs to do. We've seen maybe Netanyahu cultivate highly religious people to get what he wants. What Donald Trump, it is blasphemy. But it's it, do you is it does it surprise you that there are not more white Christian leaders who stand up and say that? Well, I think if you're dealing with white Christian nationalism, which is not Christian at all. Uh, it is not surprising. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.